we continue with our objective to craft an African wealth building culture by learning from societies where a significant proportion of ordinary people have become wealthy. This is a habit six in our workshop lessons for Africa from eight habits of ordinary looking American millionaires. In this habit, we will discuss that millionaires teach their children to fish, not just to wait for fish. In habit four, we discuss the devastating effects of economic outpatient care on children and grandchildren of some of the people who managed to build wealth. That discussion of EOC often raises the question, if cash and related gifts have such negative effects, what form of gifts are more beneficial to children? People who ask such questions are eager to know how to enhance the economic productivity and independence of their children. Now, the, the best wealth builders who are most successful with their children focus on teaching their children the lifestyle of frugality. They know that training children otherwise cultivates adult hyperspenders who need cash subsidies up to middle age. As part of their continual planning and reflection, the best wealth builders ask themselves key questions about raising economically productive children while building wealth at the same time. Those such questions are, what intergenerational transfers are more likely to help our children become economically productive adults? What should we give to our children and grandchildren? They don't leave such critical questions to chance. They don't assume that everything will turn out okay. They face those brutal conversations with themselves squarely. They, they, they talk to themselves. They reflect. Out of their reflections, the wealthy greatly appreciate the value of high-quality education. They spend a large amount of their resources on their children's education. How does that contrast with Africa? <clears throat> How valuable do we look at education when we, we begin to feel wealthy, when we emphasize wealth? Unfortunately, in some parts of our society, the wealthier we become, the lower the value we attach to education. Millionaires frequently mention tuition as the gift they receive from their parents. Other forms of economic gifts mentioned by significant and fewer millionaires include financial support to buy their first home, interest-free loan here and there, funding for a mortgage payment, and so forth. In addition to education, this is what the best wealth builders give their children to make them economically productive. One, an environment. An environment that honors independent thought and deed. That is something they treasure. Independent thought and deed. An environment that cherishes individual achievement. An environment that rewards responsibility and leadership. They teach their children to live on their own and meet their own costs. These things aren't very expensive, but they are the most important in life. These skills. The best wealth builders teach their children the link between a good life and loving to serve people. 
creating value for people, solving problems that affect people, creating products people love to use and love to pay for, addressing the pains and the difficulties that affect people, increasing and advancing people. Because in that kind of service to people, there is a form of income generation. And remember, income generation is the seed of wealth creation. It's the foundation of wealth creation. So the best wealth builders who are successful at raising economically productive children teach them these things. These are six things which are very important. The link between people and the people's money and good life. When these actions are less costly than EOC, than economic occupation care, they cause the best outcomes for the children and the parents. Apart from college education, two thirds, over two thirds of millionaires got no economic gifts. That's what the research shows. Apart from college, uh, sponsorship or, or fees, tuition, over two thirds didn't get anything. That includes those whose parents were wealthy. Those family values played a key role in building their economic productivity and financial independence. Now look at this unfortunate example with some wealthy parents. They notice an elder child who is extremely independent, achievement-oriented and well-disciplined. So they nurture those traits by not controlling his or her decision-making. They spend instead more time helping the less resourceful child by making decisions or, making, uh, or taking over the decisions. They take over the decision-making role for him or her. By treating these two children in these two different ways, the parents unknowingly strengthen the stronger child, making him or her more independent and empowered, and they weaken the weaker child, making him or her more dependent and disempowered. This weakening of the weak often happens to children who show personality-related weaknesses. The best wealth builders who get the best outcomes with children, especially the children who show a deficiency, they commit to overcoming the problem. They commit to overcoming the deficiency rather than stepping in to cover the problem. Rather than taking over the decision making, they come in focused on resolving the issue so that the, the child, the challenged child, remains uh, in charge of their lives. Evidence shows that in adulthood, weakened children show certain negative traits. One, they lack initiative. Two, they are underachievers economically. They spend big and they always need economic outpatient care. Remember, we are discussing that the best wealth builders, the millionaires who succeed, teach their children to fish. They teach their children initiative. They teach their children independence. How does this compare and contrast with our African reality? What do we teach our children as we uh, build wealth, as we begin to feel wealthy, begin to, to, to look wealthy? What do we teach our children? Habit 6 has showed us that the millionaires, the successful millionaires, teach their children to fish. They teach them initiative. 
They teach them achievement. They teach them independence, living independently, meeting the costs. They don't teach them to just sit and wait for fish to eat. I hope that you've got a point or two that you can uh, uh, include in the way you are doing it to turn around and improve your own culture of wealth building. That was habit six. I welcome you to habit seven. Habit seven will discuss the concept which says the millionaires raise their children following certain common rules. Welcome.